Hey guys, on the bench we have a an inverter generator that I picked up. It is a WEN 2000 watt model number 56203i. I picked this up kind of a, as an impulse buy. My daughter's birthday is coming up and we are renting a bounce house to get set up at the park uh, down the street and where we're renting where the pavilion we're renting at the park does not have electricity so I've been keeping my eye on these inverter generators for a while um, this was kind of an excuse to pick one up wasn't that expensive I think it was maybe maybe three hundred eighty three hundred ninety dollars I don't remember exactly uh, it was pretty highly rated on Amazon it was their one of their recommended models um, don't be alarmed I took it apart but it's there's nothing actually wrong with it I did some testing well well we'll get back to that so before I get too far into how it works let me get into what it is because there's a lot of how do I say this um, this is kind of a knockoff on a Yamaha generator uh, there's also Hondas out there they're all pretty good but they're all a little bit different so if you look up this same generator, say from a year ago, it'll be totally different internally. What do I mean by that? So, looking at other YouTube videos, I'm going to get you guys closer in here. So you'll notice here, there's the, the emissions tag. You probably can't see it too well. Let me see if I can zoom you in a little bit. It'll kind of give you some less direct lighting. So hopefully that sheds some light in. Can I zoom in a little bit more? Nope, that's it. So this uh, this generator has a Zong Shen Z O N G S H E N engine. As best I can tell, it's a model 148F. Um, a lot of the other ones that are very similar to this have a, a Rato R A T O. Um, I think it's a oh boy R80 engine. So they're all 7980 CCs. They're all made in China, obviously. Uh, but they all have different manufacturers. So there's, a, I, I learned by researching online, there's a, a couple different manufacturers that make these kind of Honda and Yamaha clones. There's a Lifan, for one. There's a Lonsen, L-O-N-C-I-N. There's a Rato, R-A-T-O. And apparently there's Zongshen. This one appears to be a Yamaha clone. I don't know too much about it yet. Uh, I, I started up, I ran it for a while. Um, just to make sure it ran. Haven't put it through its paces yet. I did notice a couple little oddities that I'll get into in a little bit. Uh, I have confirmed that as a cast iron bore. Um, I haven't talked too much about small engines and specs and what I like to see and what I don't, but one of the things I really, really do like to see in any reasonably high quality engine is a cast iron bore. Easy way to find that out. Yank the spark plug, take one of these magnetic pointers here, stick it down the spark plug hole. Get close to the cylinder wall. If it's an aluminum bore, nothing's going to happen. But you stick this thing down there, it's sticking to the wall of the cylinder. So I can tell just by feeling it, it's stuck to the cylinder wall. So that's good. Iron bore is good. Iron lasts a lot longer than aluminum bore. Uh, you'll find alum typical aluminum bores on like uh, small Briggs and Stratton lawnmower engines. They're good for maybe 150, 200 hours before bad things start to happen. Cast iron bores, many, 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 many hundreds of hours. You typically see that in commercial equipment. So that's a good thing. Uh, now on to the bad, I guess, right? Nothing's ever all good. Okay, we're off the tripod. All bets are off. So, you see here, there's overhead valves. Got your carburetor there. You got a, a cheapy foam air cleaner. Not bad, not great. Just uh, be prepared to replace that in a couple years. I added a, uh, an aftermarket uh, aluminum dipstick oil dipstick with a magnet on the tip and I will say it's pulled up quite a little bit I've got maybe two hours in this generator just running in the garage farting around 
Um, glad I had it. There was some stuff that got caught in there. So on the front of the generator, what do we see? We see our two outlets on the left. We see our cigarette lighter plug in, kind of in the center there. We have our eco mode. We have our fuel shutoff valve and yada, yada, yada. Kind of standard setup. I'll get into all that a little bit later. Don't get too crazy yet. Let's spin it around and I'll give you a look at the other side. Pull start, nothing too fancy. On the back side, you got your exhaust and uh, engine cooling output. So it's a pretty simple generator, not much to it. It's very light, it's uh, definitely less than 50 pounds. I was, it might even be less than 40. Um, I mean, I can pick it up no problem with one hand, even on the workbench. It's very quiet. I'll get into the specifics later, but from over in that doorway, with the generator running, say about there, I measured with my phone less than 60 decibels uh, with eco mood with a light load, nearly full, fully loaded, running that air conditioner, while, which I'll also get to later. Um, it was, I think, maybe around 67 decibels, which isn't tragic. This is a 2,000 watt generator, which is rated for 1,700 running watts, and it was able to start that one ton AC. It's pretty incredible. You look online, there's not many generators that can do that. So I don't know if you guys can see that tag. This is a 13,500 watt, I'm sorry, 13,500 BTU air conditioner. It is 11.9 amps, and it was able to start and run that. I mean, it struggled a little bit. Whoops, we got out of focus there. Sorry about that. It struggled a little bit, but it ran it. I mean, it ran it for a good long while. Um, the only thing that I this generator did not seem to like to run, this is kind of strange. I think I have an explanation for it, but I'll, I'll get it for you. Stand by. find it. Of everything I put this generator through, it doesn't like this heat gun. It actually loves the heat gun on high heat, hates the heat gun on medium heat. It's fine on low heat, fine on maximum heat, and anywhere in between this thing freaks out. My theory for that is that there's probably some kind of fancy electronics in here, in this Milwaukee heat gun, that uses pulse width modulation that is confusing the inverter board on here. That's the only explanation I can offer. So I'm guessing that when you put it on medium heat, it's kind of pulsing that heating element on really quickly and that's messing with the controls down in here. So everything else, it runs just fine. It runs a fan, it runs a drill, it runs a grinder. Uh, again, runs that air conditioner. It runs this grinder over there if you give it a little bit of a head start. Although probably not, probably wouldn't even need the head start if you start it not on eco mode. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a pretty impressive little, little machine, quite honestly. So my objective initially, just in getting it going, was to Put some oil in there, put this fancy aftermarket dipstick in there, get a couple hours on there. Oh, you can see there's already some metal goo on there. I'll show you what it looks like. So if you look at the tip of this thing and you wipe it on a paper towel, look at that. That's mostly iron, if not all iron. So again, I was just kind of breaking it in. I uh, got a couple hours in there, put this cheapy Briggs and Stratton engine oil in there. I got this on Amazon, like three dollars, way overpriced for this size bottle. But anyway, perfect amount for this generator. Get a couple hours in there, dump the oil, and I'll start putting it through its paces a little bit more. Um, it came with a a torch, spark plug, an E5T. I mean. 
these torches might be okay, but I'm, I'm old school. I prefer Champions, NGKs, Auto Lights, a brand name I kind of recognize. Torch is a little bit new to the game. So I crossed that torch plug over to a Champion. I also crossed it over to a resistor plug in case you want to run you know, a radio or something by this thing. You don't want the spark plug interference. Crosses over to a Champion RL95YC. So now that I've confirmed the bore is cast iron, I wanted to make sure of that before I decided to keep this thing. I'm not going to keep a generator that doesn't have an iron bore. I don't keep any small engines that don't have iron bores, quite honestly. Um, we'll put this plug back in and we'll replace the torch and we'll run it again. All right, so I got the, the Champion plug installed, the torch is out. Again, there's probably nothing wrong with this torch, but I mean, it's a spark plug. It's what, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, whatever it is. Go with a brand you recognize. I mean, they rarely cause a problem, but why even mess around? I mean, it, it's too cheap not to worry, not, not to, it's too cheap to mess around with. All right, so next morning, uh, I think we covered the motor pretty good yesterday. Um, yeah, I told you what make and model I think it is, is Zhang Chen 148F. Um, what to talk about next? Change the spark plug. I think that might be it. There's not really much else here to talk about. Uh, you have your inverter board here. Looks like it's got some nice potting on there to protect it, though I don't see any, like, I don't know, there's nothing, no stress mitigation, any of the harnesses, they're not potted or anything, or, I don't know, I don't think, hopefully that won't be a problem. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, I guess now it's time to fire it up, right? Let's do it. Got all the side panels back on, just so you can see how loud it is. Let's turn the fuel on. Let's do choke, since this is cold. <clears throat> Let's give her a go. you guys what I was referring to before when I told you what that with the heat gun I didn't wear in the middle. Um, the generator hunts badly so I'll show you what to do. I'm gonna turn eco mode off. So that's very low heat right now. I'm gonna gradually turn the heat up. You can hear it. Now 
if I turn heat all the way up maximum, it's fine. Strange. Again, the only thing I could think of is that maybe there's some microcontroller inside that heat gun that pulses that heating element on and off. And uh, that's just confusing the electronics and the generator. That's the only appliance that I've tested so far where I've observed that behavior. Let's, uh, let's hook it up to the one ton portable AC and see how it does. And here's the label on the AC. Hopefully you can read that. This is a 13,500 BTUs per, per hour, 11.9 uh, amps. Okay, got it all hooked up. Uh, the AC is currently off. I'm gonna turn Eco on the generator mode off, and I'm gonna turn on the AC. There's a, maybe a two minute delay from when it actually, uh, you, know, you turn the AC on, the compressor starts. So, the big delay, hopefully I'll cut some of that out. generators on eco mode and you can see the waveform here looks very 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 clean like actually looks cleaner than utility power um, in another video previous video I actually compared the waveforms of some portable generators non-inverter generators versus utility power so if you're curious what that looks like check out some of my other generator videos but you see here this is a very very smooth waveform I'm not even going to bother running an FFT on this to calculate harmonic distortion I can tell just by looking at it it's extremely low uh, so now let's test it out a little bit under load, because sometimes the harmonics and the waveform will change depending upon the load. So right now the generator is on eco mode, nice and quiet. I'm going to turn eco mode off and let's see what happens. Man, it changes radically. So we got 126 volts, root mean squared unloaded. Let's uh, turn eco mode off. No appreciable difference. Now I'm gonna plug in my heat gun and put it up on high heat. So you see the waveform didn't really change at all. You see the, P, the RMS voltage went down to 122. I'll turn the heat gun off again. That's very impressive. This will put utility power to shame. We got our frequency, you can't see it's up in the corner there, but it's 60.04 hertz. 
very, 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 very impressive. I tell you, if, if this generator lasts, if it's durable, I would be confident in calling this a Honda or a Yamaha killer. Because it's literally half the price. I mean, you could spend a thousand dollars more, more than more than half, less than half the price. You could spend a thousand dollars on the Honda EU 2200 or the the uh, comparable Yamaha generator. I don't recall the model number, uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is impressive. You could run any sensitive electronics you want from this and uh, not worry about a thing. I'm gonna unplug it from the scope now. And just for comparison, I'll plug in plug this into the wall so you can get a feel for utility power. Carefully. So again, looks pretty good, but you see these kind of little flat spots on the on the peaks and the valleys. Again, not bad, but I think the gener generator produces better power, quite honestly. Very impressive. Now, one of the reasons I chose this branded generator, believe it or not, was the manual. This is a very, very nicely done manual. And they even have, lo and behold, a parts diagram. I challenge you to find another Honda or Yamaha knockoff that has not only a parts diagram, but parts availability. You can buy parts for this thing from the manufacturer on their website. That impressed the heck out of me. But there, I mean, as far as manuals go, this is pretty high quality. There's not many grammar errors. It seems pretty detailed. Um, I would say the only thing that didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, but maybe it does now that I'm thinking about it, is the oil recommendation. They recommend 5W30 engine oil for pretty much all operating ranges or operating temperatures. That's a synthetic 5W30. But up here, you see 10W30 is kind of this narrow range. If you look at the sticker on the unit, it actually recommends 10W30. So I'm going to run a 10W30 synthetic in there. All right, we've got a couple hours of runtime on the clock. Let's we'll dump that oil. See what we see. I got this uh, little pan here that I made out of a five gallon bucket. And they say to change it by taking out the dipstick and just tilting it. Some more little uh, giblets on there. I think that's just a fact of life. I'm doing this with the engine still warm. So, tippy tip tip. I'm using a white container just so we can see what's in here, if anything. I'm not seeing anything yet. Nor am I expecting to see anything. And keep in mind, this is a pretty low-end oil, too. This is a, just a regular, non-synthetic oil that I got, just to break it in. So let's let that oil sit for a few minutes. Let any solid that are suspended come out. And we'll take a look at it. Okay, hopefully you guys can see there are some, some sparkly bits in there. It's not abnormal, though, for a brand new engine that hasn't been broken in. I don't see any large chunks of anything, nor would I expect to. So this seems pretty typical of a engine oil, the first engine oil dump from a, you know, maybe three, four hours on the clock. So we'll go ahead and refill it with a, a high quality synthetic and run that for a while and then probably do one more change after the after we run it for a while. And then we'll follow the normal normal maintenance schedule. I go I'm a bit more aggressive with these Chinese engines only because they tend not to be assembled very clean. I've taken new ones apart before and I've seen crap on the inside, so this kind of takes out whatever was left in there from the factory, any dirt, grime, whatever. So let's put some fresh oil in. Actually, just for giggles. 
Let's stick our magnetic pointer in there and see what we pick up. Maybe nothing, maybe something. This is a bigger version of the magnet that's on the dipstick. Don't really see anything to speak of. Let's wipe it off on a paper towel. Nah, not much. That's probably all aluminum. That would be from bearings, it could be from uh, the piston, connecting rod, things of that nature. And I'm going to be using uh, Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic 10W30. I usually switch between this, uh, this and Mobile One back and forth depending upon what's on sale on any given day. But they're both pretty good oils. I run them in my cars too. Alright, I think that concludes our testing on this product. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's a great bargain. Uh, like I said, the Hondas and the Yamahas, they're a thousand bucks. This one was 388 so value, I give it an A+. Plus. Um, capabilities, I give it an A. I mean, the fact that a 2,000 watt generator can start a one ton AC, I'm pretty impressed by that. Um, I wasn't too thrilled with how it couldn't run my heat gun uh, in mild heat mode. Um, that could be just the nature of the beast, that could be just the nature of how that heat gun works. Or it could be an issue with the electronics, the designing electronics of this generator, I'm not really sure, but that might explain some of the negative reviews on Amazon where people are saying it only outputs 200 watts before it surges. So it might be due to the nature of the load you're putting on it. Um, other than that, I'm pretty happy. One minor criticism I would give the generator, they talk about draining the carburetor after every use, and while you can do that uh, by shutting the fuel off and running the engine dry, you can't really get at the screw to drain the carburetor which exits down the bottom of the generator down there uh, without taking this cover off. And to take this cover off, you gotta take off four screws. So it's not tragic, but it's a little inconvenient to get access to the motor. Um, again, not the end of the world, but I might do that differently. Maybe you could have some kind of like a couple knobs or uh, maybe just a clip that holds the, the cover on like this. So you could take it off really easily, you know? Uh, but that's a mild criticism. I mean, how often do you really need to get access to the inside anyway? Now, as far as longevity, who knows? Uh, this might last a week, it might last 10 years, I just don't know. Uh, but the fact that it has a cast iron bore, uh, they seem to have put some thought into the design. Seems to be, uh, the fit and finish is decent for a tool this, this, uh, this price point. So I'm optimistic. Uh, noise is very good. You guys heard the noise, you saw the, the decibel meter. It's fairly quiet, you can carry on a conversation while it's running. Maybe not fully loaded, but certainly while it's uh, got a minimal load on there. It's got a wide array of uh, accessories here. Um, like I said, it's got your 12 volts, uh, your 120 volts, got USB. Um, love the eco mode, makes it nice and quiet. You can hook it up to another inverter generator and do parallel and double the output. Uh, I didn't mention this before, but it does have a low oil alert. It's got an oil light here. I'm assuming if the oil gets too low, it'll probably shut itself off, but I don't really think we need to test that. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Starts pretty easy. Maybe not as easy as, say, uh, you know, a Honda or a Kawasaki, but again, for this price point, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I guess uh, that's it. If you guys have any questions or you'd like to see me do any other testing with this generator, um, leave it in the comments. And if you like this video, please subscribe and stay safe. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching.